In this video, I'd like to illustrate the Greek option theta, which gives us a measure of an option's time decay. I'd also like to illustrate the two exceptions to the general rule that theta should be negative. I'll show you the very simple direct relationship between a call options theta and a put options theta. And finally, we just want to understand the units of the option theta. In this case, what is negative 7.645? How do we characterize those as units? Option theta is the third Greek I'm looking at that is a first partial derivative. The other two were delta and vega. So now we're looking at theta. So all three of these are first partial derivatives. So they are sort of siblings and they have something in common. And that is they are the rate of change of the options value that's here on the y-axis. That's the value or price of the option per, in this case, the black scholes merton option pricing model. These are the rate of change of the option's value with respect to, in the case of delta, the underlying asset or stock price. In the case of vega, it was with respect to the implied volatility. And now in the case of theta, it's with respect to the passage of time. And so you'll sometimes read that delta and vega are stochastic or random, whereas uh, theta is deterministic. And what we mean is that if you purchase a call option, a call or put option, you don't know how the stock price or the implied volatility will evolve over time. Those are important risk factors for the holder of the option and the writer of the option. Theta, on the other hand, the passage of time is deterministic we can exactly predict its effect on the value of the option. So theta is a measure of what is called time decay. And for this reason that delta and vega are random or stochastic, but time, the passage of time is perfectly predictable, John Hull says it makes a lot of sense to hedge delta or vega, but it makes no sense to hedge theta. So in the lower left, I have the formula for theta for a call option. It's more tedious than either delta or vega. And I implement that value here in this spreadsheet that you can download. Here in the upper left, same familiar chart that I've used in the prior Greeks, right? Plot of option value against a change here. The x-axis is a change in the stock price. So we have a nonlinear function at the money. When, when the stock price equals 100, equal to the strike price, we have an at the money call option with a value or price of $13.75. And then using the formula for theta here, I'm graphing the call option theta as a function of the stock price. And you will notice on the y-axis here, theta is generally negative. This should be intuitive, right? If you hold the option, time decay says that as a maturity approaches, the option value is deter decaying for you, is reducing in value, hence the negative. In general, there are, but there are two exceptions. Over here, so we can understand the units of theta, what I've taken, my baseline here is a one-year option, option term, and you can see here is the uh, Black-Scholes-Merton value of that call, small c to denote European, $13.75, and the theta at this point is per the pure pure the pure math, and that's my spreadsheet is negative seven point six four five, and that point is right oh right here on this graph of theta, and it is negative. Now what I've done in the next row is I reduce the term by uh, one month, so one year minus one twelfth equals 0 0.92 years. Um, so we let one year elapse. Everything else we hold equal. Siri disparibus, as they say. And I've repriced the call option. Time decay suggests that the value should go down, and it does. Its value here with 11 months with remaining maturity goes down to $13.10. And that is a decline pure uh, according to pure time decay of 65 cents. And so we will see how does that compare because that's a full, that's an accurate repricing. If I take the theta of negative 7.645 and divide it by 12, 
I get pretty close. So again, as a first positive derivative, that's an instantaneous linear approximation. So we don't expect something exact, but we're pretty close. And this helps understand the units here of the theta, which we can also understand mathematically, right? As a first partial derivative, this is going to be giving us change in the option value, that's in dollars, per a one unit change in the risk factor. In this case, the risk factor is the passage of time as measured. Our inputs are per annum, are they not? So this is per one year. And so we can interpret this as really negative $7.64 per one year passage of time. And you might say, well, wait, the option only has a year. This is only $7.60. It has a current value of $13.75. True, except remember, first posture derivative, instantaneous linear approximation. And in fact, if we go down here, so we wouldn't expect it to equal the value of the call. If we go down here in blue, the other familiar way to look at the common way to look at theta is is theta according to time to expiration. So that's why I have three plots because I have an at the money option in blue. And then I also have an out of the money and an in the money. And those are both, you can see in the spreadsheet, those are both at plus or minus 30% because there's uh, different ways to measure that. But my blue one here is currently the focus. And you can see an at the, the theta of an at the money option as it approaches maturity, right? My, my, x-axis here is time to expiration, right? So we start out here and we come in. If it stays at the money, then it really starts to, let's see, that's acceleration or deceleration here. It really starts to, you'll oftentimes read, it really starts to increase, but mathematically it's moving more negative. But you can see that it really dramatic effect on the theta. So when we're out here at a year measuring theta, this theta uh, is increasingly becomes negative. The negative $7.65 more as whole shows it's probably more conventional to express it in daily terms because a one year is a long time an option as a sensitivity we're probably more interested in the daily sensitivity so it'd be common to divide this by 250 trading days and we can see what I'm getting here is 3.1 cents per trading day as the time decay or theta or I could also divide by 365 and in this case I'm getting a time decay of 2.1 cents per calendar day. I did say there's two exceptions here to the negative theta, and the first one here is with respect to the calls. We're looking at the call sheet here. The next sheet is a put. If I go ahead and raise the dividend aggressively, even unrealistically, I'm going to say a very high dividend, then I get the first exception, and that is... Notice here, over to the right, that's when the call is deeply in the money. So we have a call option that's deeply in the money with a high dividend yield. Then European call option, deeply in the money, high dividend yield. Then the first exception there to a negative theta is, uh, that's our first exception. The theta can be positive for a deeply in the money call when the dividend yield is high. And for that reason, you'll oftentimes read that it's a, a currency option when the, when the foreign interest rate is high because, right, the, in a currency option, the foreign interest rate is effectively the dividend. Okay, I'll set that back and then just quickly show you the next page, which is the put. And so here, um, now this is a put option. Shape of the theta is similar, um, but you'll notice that even without the dividend yield, I can identify the second exception. This is a more, more commonly cited exception to that rule that theta is always negative. You can see here, again, without any introducing any dividend assumption, the uh, theta for the put option is here already positive if the put is deeply in the money. So our two exceptions are one, um, our first in the case of a European call, when it's deeply in the money and there's a high dividend yield, and then the second is a um, European put when it's just deeply in the money. So both of those exceptions are deeply in the money options. Over here to the right, I've uh, taken that one-year option. The price of the one-year put is $9.83. So that's right about here on my graph. And the theta of that put is negative. 3.8, I'm going to say 3, $3.8 dollars 
uh, right? But that's a per annum number. And then just show you something interesting. Again, with tedious math for the put, except it's closely related to the call, such that if we subtracted the put from the call, the difference is actually very elegant. The difference is just the risk-free rate multiplied by the discounted strike price, right? So in that, in this case, that's three, that's 3.8. Not 3.8 I just got here with a 0 0.04 multiplied by the discounted strike price, right? E, e to the, uh, negative 0.04 times one year. That equals 3.843. And you'll notice if I just uh, subtract that from uh, the, the puts theta, I get the calls theta. So they have a very direct relationship. And just one final note about here, time, time to expiration for at the money is getting more negative as maturity approaches. But we can also infer from the formula here, you'll notice uh, sigmas in the numerator and that's just a reminder that uh, general for general rule for theta, uh, it, it's increasing with volatility, or I should say, getting more negative, right? So this this sigma in the numerator, I currently have a volatility thirty percent. That shows if I increase this volatility, this should become more negative, and that will in fact happen. Okay, so that is a th theta, the third. First partial derivative that we looked at, again, it's a sensitivity or change in the option value with respect to the passage of time, which is deterministic, perfectly predictable, also known as a measure of time decay. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.